I bought this Lin LP12 over a year ago and I'm finally getting around to performing some needed servicing. So stay tuned to watch what I do. Welcome to my own devices audio channel. If this is your first time here, welcome and be sure to check out my many previous videos that explore all manner of hi-fi gear and topics. Analog and digital, new, used, and vintage. It's all good to me. If you appreciate what I do, then go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button as well. It helps to spread good karma. Thanks. If you are at all familiar with this turntable, then you probably know the myth and legend of the Lin Sondek LP12. Adored by its disciples and derided by its detractors, this evergreen vinyl spinner has successfully survived the era of the CD and digital music streaming. However, for many, it has lost its lofty position among the hi-fi elite. Many have moved on from its quaint and retro styling to more modern looking designs. And it will never be considered hi-fi jewelry, but it still commands awe and respect from the faithful and those who remember when the LP-12 was king. Lynn was founded in Glasgow, Scotland during the early 1970s by a very charismatic and outspoken individual named Ivor Tiefenbrun. The LP-12 was Lynn's first product, and it was Ivor's own take on a three-point suspended turntable design. Why suspend the platter and arm on springs? It's in order to damp out mechanical vibrations from reaching the record and stylus. And people have pointed out that it does possess some similarities to older previous models made by Torrens, Acoustic Research, and Ariston. Tiefenbrunn was a marketing genius who put a tremendous amount of effort during the 1970s and 80s, pushing the source first philosophy of hi fi system building. Essentially, he set out to challenge conventional wisdom and declared that the most crucial component in the system is the source, or the turntable to be more specific. And that is where the majority of your efforts and financial resources should be allocated. Garbage in, garbage out was the often repeated phrase. If your turntable is not doing a fantastic job extracting the music from the record groove, then the rest of the audio chain is seriously compromised, regardless of how much you spend on your amp and speakers. Garbage in, garbage out. This is a direct contradiction of the prevailing idea that the loudspeakers and amplifier are the most important components in the chain. Now, if you want to point out the obvious rebuttal, he would say that, wouldn't he? He's selling fairly pricey turntables after all. Now that philosophy really took hold in the UK during the 1980s. And I remember seeing recommended systems in hi-fi shops comprising of an LP-12, a little name Nate, and a pair of tiny Wharfdale diamond speakers. I do still tend to agree with that philosophy when starting out building a system. And once you believe you've sorted out your front end or source, then you can focus on the rest of your components. Now getting back to my LP-12, I've wanted one since the 1980s. And when I saw this one listed locally, I jumped on it and got an excellent deal. And this unit is from 1988 and it's in terrific condition. I bought it from the son of the original owner who had no use for it after his dad had passed away. One of the first things I did when I got it home was start reading about the LP-12 and watching videos and joining Lynn Facebook groups and forums. And the more I read, the more intimidated I became. Everyone goes on about the highly trained, authorized Lynn service people who perform the complex upgrades, repairs, and tune-ups, implying that perhaps mere novices like me should not even attempt such intricate maneuvers. Although it appears to be quite a simple device, the guides I read state that every part, down to how each of the individual screws, cables, and brackets are positioned, 
is integral to the overall performance of the turntable. Unfortunately, where I live in Florida, the nearest so-called authorized Lynn dealer is a couple of hundred miles away, and I'm really a DIYer at heart, so I decided to go that route. The first bit of servicing I did was to change the bearing oil. And since the age and condition of the oil was unknown, this is a sensible decision. And I believed a fairly simple task. However, I soon learned that any old light machine oil is not adequate. This model requires special black lin oil. And where does one obtain this unique oil? At the time, I could not find a U.S. supplier, so I looked on eBay and found a seller in Scotland. I actually ordered two bottles for future use and the order came to a total of $44 including shipping. An absurd price for a couple of thimblefuls of oil. This here is a quick reenactment of what I did last year. The procedure involved cleaning out the old oil from the bearing sleeve and I used a cotton swab and some isopropyl alcohol. Other people have other methods, but anyway, refill the bearing sleeve with the fresh magic oil, just enough for it to overflow a little bit when you reinsert the bearing shaft. It's like 30 to 35 drops. Wrap it with paper towel to catch any spillage. You then reinsert the inner platter shaft and spin it until it drops down. You then replace the belt, the outer platter, and put the felt mat back on and Bob's your uncle. And remember to remove the outer platter before moving the LP-12. You don't want it jostling about and possibly knocking the suspension off. I realized a while ago that the suspension is not set properly and that I will need to make adjustments to the springs to level out the platter and to also have it bouncing properly to get that Lin bounce. After reading that I should replace the 34-year-old springs and grommets when performing this duty, I ordered a new set from the UK. Yes, yes, they are available to buy from a US dealer, but at a ridiculous price. It was actually cheaper to order them from a British seller. The best way to perform servicing tasks like this on an LP-12 is to elevate it up on a jig and keep it right side up rather than flip it over. Lin dealers use a metal setup jig when servicing LP-12s, but once again, these are difficult to find for sale on these shores and are priced a bit more than I wish to spend shipping one from the UK. And looking on eBay, I eventually found a guy in the UK who makes his own wooden LP-12 jigs for a lot less. And after reading numerous positive feedback comments, I ordered one. So I unpacked the jig kit and assembled it. The instructions were pretty clear and it wasn't very difficult to put together. It's made from some kind of lightweight fiberboard and it was shaped by a precision CNC machine. Now it's clear that it's not nearly as robust as the pricier metal jig, but imagining the actual future need to service my LP-12 I believe this unit will suit me just fine. I place the turntable onto the jig, sitting on the tabletop with a towel underneath. It fits snugly, and I needed to change the location of a couple of the brackets in order to route the cables through the notches. I used an old portable light to illuminate the underside of the LP-12. It's crucial that the turntable plinth is as level as possible left to right and front to back. I used a precision spirit level tool several times during the process to ensure that it was indeed level. And the jig has four adjustable feet that you turn to raise and lower each corner. And if you look carefully, you can see that the platter is not level. It's actually slightly lower on the left side. The first thing you do when you get it on the jig is to remove the bottom panel by removing the six small wood screws. So now you have clear access to all the LP-12's innards. And the three springs are held in place by plastic and rubber grommets 
and a small locking nut. You simply unscrew each nut until the springs and grommets come off the long bolts that are attached through the top plate. I apologize, but I didn't shoot any footage of me installing the new springs. But I simply attached the grommets to each end of the spring, I slid them over the bolts, I compressed them until I could get the washers on, and then screwed on the nuts. And that was the easy part. The challenging aspect was adjusting each of the nuts until the platter is level and the tone arm board is flush and square with the plinth. You simply can't set each spring at the same height and be done. You see, each spring is supporting a different load, so each one is under a different amount of tension. The goal is that the suspension should move freely in all directions and adjust it so that it bounces easily straight up and down with no sideways or erratic motions. I started out by using a socket wrench to turn the nuts, but soon realized that I could hold the socket between my fingers and easily loosen and tighten the springs that way. Adjusting also involves some twisting of the springs to get the arm board in the correct position. I used the leveling tool continuously during the process to check the platter. It was frustrating because I would get the platter nice and level, but then the arm board would be too high or too low or crooked. There was a lot of trial and error, and I actually thought I was finished twice but then I shared photos and videos online with some seasoned LP12 experts and I was informed that it wasn't quite right and I needed to get it back on the jig. Let me say here that this procedure is unlike any I've ever performed on a piece of hi-fi gear. Holy moly. On the third try, I believe I got it pretty close to optimal and the bounce looks, looks good to me. In fact, I'm now wondering if this makes me a certified LIN service technician. My wife says it doesn't. But am I now entitled to some sort of medal or prize? My wife says I'm not. What do you guys think?